uh, some of the uh, uh, implementations uh, we are uh, making use of this particular bagging and boosting so in a simplest way literally if i am saying some bagging so i am having a storage and uh, i am having some kind of the uh, constructs with me maybe object 1 object 2 object 3 like that uh, boosting in the sense uh, i am adding some power to the appropriate object boosting okay so let us uh, put in a technical uh, scenario and how do we use this particular thing in the uh, programmatical perspective okay that means technically how we are uh, using these kind of the conventions because uh, the generic aspect is uh, bagging in the sense uh, storage of okay some kind of the aspects and uh, where whenever there is a requirement and i can pick up uh, those kind of the things so uh, what do you mean by ensemble learning friends by the way ensemble learning some of the aspect we have seen in the earlier sessions ensemble learning okay so this means uh, uh, suppose if i am uh, making use of uh, any uh, algorithm one and i want to integrate uh, some algorithm definitely the integrated one okay so which is uh, uh, the model so the model uh, generated by these two as a source definitely it becomes a better model compared with these two so that is what you call the ensemble uh, in our uh, course of study we have seen uh, uh, random forest actually so if you observe this particular random forest which is nothing but the combination of okay combination of um, what you call the decision trees combination of the decision trees that means uh, uh, decision tree itself is a model of the classification and which is uh, based on some kind of the conventions you know so like i can uh, uh, make use of if i am making use of the decision tree uh, either i can prefer uh, the entropy okay so or else uh, information gain okay likewise some kind of the constructs would be there in the construction of the decision tree so but whereas this uh, random forest is something like uh, which is a combination of various decision trees such kind of the decision trees i am having and all those uh, decision tree uh, formed into a particular random forest this is what you call the ensemble learning okay to give a context uh, just i have uh, given this ensemble learning and uh, observe here friends uh, bagging and as well as the boosting also okay belongs to the category of the ensemble learning because you know uh, suppose uh, uh, I am having some idea with me, idea one, and Venkat is having another idea, and maybe Suresh is having another idea. Okay, so uh, together, if I am, if I am, if we are sharing with uh, Akash or someone else, then obviously Akash can add some more thing so that it becomes uh, uh, one one best uh, idea integration of all these things. So based on the same principle, we are having the narration of this particular bagging and uh, boosting okay so uh, bagging as uh, the name implies you know friends we are uh, keeping one uh, common area and uh, within that particular uh, common area uh, it is a homogeneous uh, weak learners model that learns from each other independently in parallel and combine them for uh, uh, determine the model average so that means uh, suppose if you are uh, referencing uh, one kind of the bagging technique so here we are having all the learners learner one learner two learner three and as well as learner n okay all these learners may be the independent kind of thing okay and uh, if you are referencing these things and uh, they uh, the weak learners model that learns from each other and independently in parallel okay so if you are uh, referencing uh, if you are referencing these particular independent learning and obviously, uh, by combining all these kind of the aspects, friends, we can get the average performance. Somewhere we have seen this uh, method, friends, uh, in uh, our technique. Weak learners. In Nave by S, we have seen. 
intentionally asked frank uh, to listen from you yeah? so this may bias won't leave us actually see two important things friends weak learners and as well as the probabilistic values never leave you okay uh, because uh, many at times you know you have to deal with uh, learn weak learners maybe i i may not get always the features which are really contributing or really doing something but uh, rather what you can observe is uh, these particular weak learners can uh, uh, specify or add on something so if i am uh, taking weak, weak learner 0.1 0.2 again 0.1 0.3 together i can get average of some uh, 0.3 or something so obviously it is uh, leading to some kind of the average performance okay so where do we use these kind of the models friends in the bagging especially so if you are referencing the bagging so let me give you this diagram from the source yeah observe here is a kind of the bagging technique which is uh, ensemble classifier and we are having classifier 1 classifier 2 and classifier 3 so generally if you are uh, referencing the model of the random forest okay so random forest is the best example where i can uh, uh, use decision tree 1 here decision tree 2 here and decision tree and together uh, we can form uh, see this model you know which is combination of all these things uh, maybe we are picking the uh, entries from various aspects and we are performing and if you remember friends uh, while working with the decision tree or random forest there we have seen bootstrapping what do you mean by bootstrapping friends how do you refer that so just to simple how many reds are there here 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 uh, to do with purity the more uh... ah purity is one more important thing friends if you remember and recollect from the discussion of the decision tree there we have studied impure and uh, pure set of the data so if uh, all these kind of the things you know though we are having 10 red colors from various uh, classifier but we have uh, picked up only five the uh, best ones i can say five best ones because if i am having the chance of uh, picking up uh, a particular thing and uh, that particular thing is allowing me so as to perform some kind of the activity okay in a better way definitely it is uh, helping us so now the process is like this friend very simple bagging in the sense uh, just we are uh, trying to uh, observe all the homogeneous kind of the algorithms or homogeneous kind of the inputs and uh, which in a way we are aggregating the things okay so like uh, you know what do you mean by aggregation friends here aggregation is nothing but the mean or something some common thing we are going to identify as a common measure and uh, if you refer the bootstrapping without any repetition we are touch touch basing all the different possibilities you see uh, whichever the color i am having in all these reclassifiers as uh, uh, repeated and uh, we are covering almost all different aspects here also that means we are giving chance to everything and uh, one more important thing is apart from that we are fetching some kind of the performance improvement uh, uh, with respect to all these kind of the aspects okay you, if you observe if you are uh, learning in the earlier session we have seen a gradient uh, descent actually so which is very real time and there we have observed uh, generally one person uh he is blindfolded and uh, he want to perform some kind of uh, uh, uh he want to reach to the bottom of that particular mountain and he he want to reach to that uh, some kind of the river okay how he is going to take the steps similarly we have taken there some alpha value learning rate and uh, that particular learning learning rate uh, should be optimized so as to get uh, uh, i mean not optimized actually that should be minimum okay so we have to take that particular value cautiously and mindfully which in turn gives the optimization of uh, uh, error value okay because that is a cost function that particular cost function uh, functionality is uh, so as to uh, get uh, the optimized results uh, by reducing the error rate between y prediction and as well as the uh, y test okay actual y value and whatever the things so uh, here uh, 
uh, if you are referencing the random forest model, which uses the concept of the bagging, uh, where the decision tree models with the higher variance are present. What do you mean by higher variance, friends? Sometimes, you know, uh, just we are making use of that uh, uh, variance and mean, median kind of the things, higher variance. The the uh, the very uh, the difference between the mean and the value ah, is uh, value is suppose if I am taking one value and if I am considering the mean of that particular value the, that is far uh, uh, far distinct with the mean kind of the thing so that is the entries are higher variance so in that particular case there is no commonality friends okay if I am having plenty of the things and there is no commonality and uh, the bagging aspect is really helping you guys. Okay, so just this particular bagging helps you where uh, your decision tree models with uh, higher variance are present and it makes uh, the random feature selection to grow as a tree kind of the things. And obviously several random trees uh, make a random forest. We know pretty that. So now why we are referring this particular thing friends, maybe if you uh, uh, see and if you observe while revisiting these kind of the algorithms, some of the new terminologies and terms would be connected these things. So that I want to uh, clarify those aspects also. At later point of time, maybe uh, while seeing these kind of things, you should not feel that oh these concepts were not covered like uh, bagging and boosting because these things are pretty known to us but only the thing is we have to observe uh, uh, there are many uh, terminological aspects where uh, interchangeably nowadays uh, in corporates you know they may not you uh, they may uh, not want to use the same kind of the terminology here and there so they just uh, twist and uh, tweak those kind of things so that i thought of giving you the essence of what exactly the uh, these uh, kind of the things and now coming to the boosting okay so boosting is also uh, suppose something friends if you observe if i want to increase the capacity of a person or if, the, if i want to increase uh, the capacity of the machine okay so suppose i'm uh, performing some kind of the activity and i want to highlight this particular activity so that means i want to add uh, some more characters characteristics this to this particular activity whether this is homogeneous or heterogeneous in that case can i add heterogeneous characteristics to a person so the person is a hard worker and the person is uh, very enthusiastic of learning i should put in that zoner not in the dynamic or in the communication or group discussion i should not so this is also a homogeneous kind of thing where to the existing aspect that's what called boosting friends actually boost up boost up in the sense whatever the input i am having i am going to boost up these kind of the aspects so as to get the better performance okay so this particular boosting it is also a homogeneous uh, weak learners model but works differently from the bagging so like you know uh, which is uh, learning sequentially and uh, adaptively to improve model predictions of a learning algorithm now, if you observe friends, uh, this particular boosting, what it does is uh, maybe I am trying to add some character three. And after adding character three, this becomes uh, some kind of the weak. That means, you know, uh, hope you got the point friends. In the first level, I, I have added this uh, character one and character two. I could see some kind of the improvement in the performance of this particular uh, 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 whatever the um, model we are uh, performing. But whereas by after adding this particular uh, character three, so it slightly degraded rather than boosting, it is getting, uh, it is uh, not empowered actually. It is uh, lost his, its power actually. So it is uh, coming back and it is not performed well. Uh, assume that this is version one and we are having version two and as well as version three. Now, in this particular case, uh, compared with version 2, okay, version 3 should be greater, okay, the performance of performance I am talking. But whereas surprisingly, if you are getting this thing, then you should not go and uh, add this particular character. Now, you tell me this point, friends, uh, if I am talking about the bagging and just now we have seen some kind of the boosting, let me revisit once more. Bagging is a process of combining all the classifiers and coming up with uh, some kind of the average 
performance with uh, with respect to all these kind of the things whereas boosting is nothing but starting with a simple method and keep on adding some kind of the characteristics so that I, we are going to add uh, uh, we are going to empower that particular model now tell me at this point friends uh, what is the basic difference between these two because uh, first they may question you uh, what, what do you mean by bagging and as well as the boosting and definitely we can see bagging is a pro homogeneous uh, where all the weak learners can be combined and uh, we can get at least uh, average performance okay so uh, the best example is uh, i can say some kind of the random forest and i can make use of uh, these uh, various uh, decision trees so as to adopt this particular bagging whereas if i am talking about the boosting technique boosting is something like you know uh, which is uh, based on some kind of the convention like we are keep on adding some kind of the trials okay and uh, if that particular trial is suitable to the existing method automatically it is going to raise the bar so obviously we are getting the best quality and uh, best outcome okay then if i am asking you guys what is the difference between bagging and boosting then how do you refer that point um, boosting is something where uh, it it always uh, uh, like a kind of improve improve uh, improve uh, whatever the result is always and better one whereas uh, uh, in the in the bagging uh, we always uh, it it is more like an average kind of thing where we uh, we include all the weak learners so it's mm. it's pretty much the same uh, like uh, it includes all those uh, the variations okay same output you may expect not that much great boosting you know based on the availability of the aspects you can reach to the maximum that uh, venkat has said that uh, we only take the, the 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 parameters or the things that improves the 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 overall very good that, that is the point i need actually see in case of the bagging friends we don't know uh, which weak learner is really causing trouble to us and uh, because as a whole we are seeing na suppose in a class akash is there neelima is there lakshmi suresh if you all guys are talking then i can say it is a boosting if you guys are listening to me and uh, just i thought of okay they are following me and they can uh, they are understanding and they are uh, working that's all na until you are asking any doubt or if you are not interacting i am in in the in the mode of uh, okay they are all good and they are really well but maybe sometimes it is uh, killing us also because this is a bagging kind of aspect na i am feeling that okay all the members are on, on same track on same page so that uh, they are uh, following me like that kind of thing whereas this boosting is entirely different friends maybe i can say um, uh, suresh and venkat some lakshmi like akash each and every member are performing some kind of the uh, work useful work maybe neelima also so if you are referencing and uh, based on their individual works okay we can uh, boost the learning friends work 4 and as well as the work 5 it means that there is a chance of understanding what exactly increasing the capacity of this particular learning and in what way the appropriate boosting is happening all these kind of the conventions are uh, really helping us so as to uh, process the data okay now have a look on this friends this is a boosting kind of the technique so in step 1 this is a step 2 and as well as step 3 kind of things so which are all the things okay which are not suitable to uh, these kind of aspects we are uh, segregating and we are only coming up with some of the aspects where we are really getting the uh, improve improvement of the corresponding outcome okay so uh, here clearly one important point is uh, as our friend rightly said in bagging there is no separation we are seeing the entire thing as one image only friends not individually or independently we are not going to evaluate uh, all these candidates individually but rather what we are doing is we are uh, making use of uh, this particular uh, boosting in such a way that here uh, we can easily see the which are all the things not uh, 
really contributing and which are all rejected as a part of uh, this particular classif classification, okay? So this is how you can observe. So now what do you mean by this weighted data friends? Why we have, we have used the term weighted? Rather, in case of this diagram, there is no weighting something. Just we are picked up all those kind of the average performers and we are expecting the finalization. But uh, why we are adding this weighting? No, to improve the performance, uh, it's uh, it, it helps in uh, kind of iteration kind of yeah. thing. So See here, it is weight of five. Definitely it should greater than the next thing, na? six, maybe eight. So this particular weighted data helps us to quantify. So whether we are moving in a positive direction or this definitely helps us friend because uh, though we are not using much this uh, boosting kind of thing. And if I want to give the example, uh, maybe ADA boost. Okay, very rare we are using XZ boost and gradient boosting. All these are some of the uh, boosting kind of the techniques where uh, you can bank on. So all these kind of the conventions we may not directly use. Okay, so only in uh, hyperparameter tuning or in case of the deep learning kind of the aspects. Uh, we can adopt all these kind of the conventions, but otherwise, if you are, uh, if you want to explain these kind of the conventions with uh, a simplest thing, uh, boosting we can track and we can observe which are all uh, the learners really helping us, and we are keep on uh, boosting the performance of these particular models, and uh, we can easily track uh, whether the previous model compared with the current model, whether previous model is really uh, good or not, these kind of the conventions can be observed. Now, uh, one, uh, one uh, uh, differentiation we have seen friends. Okay, and uh, if I want to, uh, if I am asking you uh, some other uh, uh, differentiations, because, uh, uh, you know, while uh, discussing about this particular point, uh, that bagging, clearly I can say, uh, maybe if I am using the, uh, some kind of the naive bias or else if I'm using some uh, uh, concept of uh, this particular, uh, yeah. can I differentiate bagging and boosting in terms of uh, supervised and unsupervised friends? Think through that. And let me pick the differentiations so that we can consolidate these aspects and then we can jump into the best practices, which is very important. Now we have a look on this guys. What do you mean by uh, bagging? The simplest way of combining predictions that belong to the same type. That means all the decision tree models are combined so as to form the random forest. Okay, but whereas a way of combining that belonging to the different types. Because why we are uh, managing this convention is friends. Uh, um, suppose in, in uh, actually if you refer this particular diagram, what exactly this diagram says is uh, after adding some other different kinds of the data items, okay, just we are uh, getting some kind of the improvement in the performance of the model. So what we are doing here is uh, a different types, okay, but whereas in case of the decision tree, all uh, similar kind of the decision tree, okay, we are using and we are uh, generating those particular thing in the context of the uh, generation of the random forest. Now you, you see here friends, Somewhere we have seen this bias and uh, variance trade-off. Where we have seen? Yeah, uh, underfitting and overfitting. Yes, when we, uh... very good, excellent, okay. So this particular bias and as well as the variance, there should be some perfect trade-off between those kind of the things, friends. And uh, based on this particular bias and variance trade-off, we can get the perfect fit. Otherwise, it uh, either leads to the uh, overfit or underfit kind of thing. Overfitting, how do you define? In what way you're uh, defining that overfit kind of aspects? Uh, no, uh, where the model uh, doesn't learn. Mm. Uh, where the model doesn't learn and it, it fails when we give the test data. <laughs> that means uh, it is uh, perfect in training. And uh, yeah. rather it, than following it, up all the uh, kind of, you know, uh, rather than learning, uh, but it is by hearting. So Correct. simply what it is doing is it is uh, getting the input 
Uh, we have given a nice example also. That time maybe we are having various uh, classifiers, three companies, and, uh, yeah, yeah. three companies, but we are working on only two companies. We completely mm -hmm. ignore that uh, country data or company data. But suddenly, if you are giving that company data, definitely it uh, miserably fails, friends, because it doesn't have any exposure on the third one. Okay, even we also we may be good at uh, some of the aspects, maybe data science or data engineering. But suddenly, someone asks us to. Uh, any question in uh, big data or Hadoop kind of thing, definitely we we, uh, we can we cannot immediately give the answer. Na? So that is what how you can refer. We are perfect in uh, data science and data engineering perspective. But where at the, at the moment I am talking about uh, these kind of the conventions uh, uh, like Hadoop, big data, Hive or HBase kind of aspect, I may not know that. Similarly, our model is also behaving like that in the, in the training we have uh, uh, given the entire aspects, okay? But uh, we missed out some of the cla classifiers or some of the classifications. So in that particular case, uh, uh, just we are making use of uh, uh, these uh, uh, overfitting kind of thing. But what do you mean by underfit condition? <laughs> exactly, opposite kind of thing. What uh, do you underfit mean? is, uh, the, the, the model is very weak. It doesn't... Uh, uh, when model becomes weak, guys, you are right uh, to agree. When, when we give uh, wrong uh, linear, uh, <laughs> when uh, uh, giving a linear, uh, like uh, when uh, when the data is non-linear, we select a linear model. Yes, yes, definitely. We are going to hit the market within two or three interviews. <laughs> oh, no, I have to. I have to prepare a lot. <laughs> Uh, still, whatever I, whatever we have discussed in the uh, class, because we have been revising. Yeah, yeah, of good. Course, a lot of time has to be spent. Uh, yeah, because uh, actual learning start from after completion of the training, friends. Learning is different. Training is different. Because uh, training, what you can see is we, we, it seems all good, and all frequencies are okay. Whatever the demonstrations, whatever the topics we are uh, giving, they are all fine tuned. But whereas once I am uh, leaving you, once I close my hands and uh, I am uh, I am not supporting you, and uh, supporting in the sense I am not walking through you, walking with you, then you have to walk yourself, and uh, you should see okay uh, what what exactly this uh, coding part and uh, algorithmic part and statistical orientation. If you see, guys, in that uh, assessment also, I have given some interesting questions. If you observe. Maybe uh, uh, all the uh, members, uh, even you may not copy also, because I am expecting you guys to get your own uh, scenario and your own way of uh, submitting the things. Okay, so don't do that. If you are copying means obviously you are, uh, uh, you are doing mistake. Okay, so... Uh, oh, this is the that. opportunity to learn, uh, Uma. Yeah, see, yeah, exactly. uh, uh, like when you talk about uh, Gini index or entropy, definitely, see, even uh, we are not able to tell, but I know because we have completed all the sessions, then we know that, okay, I need to go and uh, look Verify. at the tree and random, mm -hmm. random first. When we discuss about variance, uh, bias variance, then we always think about uh, uh, like uh, overfitting and underfitting and all those four uh, conditions that uh, we talk about, I, I bias, low variance. So, uh, at least we can go go there and look uh, at the, uh, the 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 notes on uh, notes note on algorithm like whatever it has been like clear correct and uh, k um, uh, the the k cross uh, validation that all we get, uh, yes we we have the data now we know like where to look for and uh, <laughs> what correct. what is that uh, we we lag is a checkpoint kind of thing. Right? It's a checkpoint kind of thing. So you can go back and verify. And, th and there also you can feel that uh, how much preparation I need. Okay. How much time I need to spend. Because one, if I'm asking, if I'm telling something and uh, immediately responding back is a dynamic thing and uh, that is required. Second thing is maybe some of the people are knowing everything and they don't want to participate in the debate. But only the thing is at the moment I am i'm asking you guys to project something definitely you should be able to project okay so though in the sessions uh, you may not uh, participate in the discussion and all that is perfectly okay but only the thing is whenever there is a need or whenever there is a requirement but uh, i strongly encourage the learners uh, definitely you should you should participate either through chat window or else uh, uh, by interactive 
uh, communication because you know there you you will be getting some idea and as well as the support friends basically so because at the moment you are talking and at the moment you are explaining something then you are obviously you are doing your best okay but uh, in another way because the interviewing skills and uh, uh, applicability of the these kind of the aspects and uh, and now one more component friends actually apart from these technical aspects nowadays they are uh, expecting some uh, leadership qualities and how suppose if suddenly something uh, some bug has come or some issue is there in the project then how this guy uh, uh, handles that and uh, suppose suddenly he is uh, projected in front of the client due to the absent or absence of uh, team lead or project lead whichever so how he can tackle the situation because things are very volatile you know, nowadays in the earlier days okay there is a perfect planning and all now uh, health wise we are suffering like uh, like anything and we cannot say anything that's what so maybe you or some other guy has to take care and you have to project the things in front of the client so that comes from the practice only friends in a single day uh, you cannot become a king or queen or something like that okay definitely you have to practice more and uh, obviously uh, after interaction or uh, spending some time with your mentor and uh, practicing then only you can so actually this uh, training and all is a good opportunity so as to speak and so as to contribute or integrate uh, uh, the ideas okay so and uh, next important thing is uh, if you are referencing the underfit as our friend told just it is a uh, uh, the perfect model we are not selecting that means uh, uh, the model demands okay that the model is having some complex uh, uh, demands and complex representations but we are uh, uh, we have uh, selected one simple algorithm just we are giving like that one simple and basis algorithm we are trying and we are trying to fit that uh, complex thing into our simple algorithm which is not going to work out friends which is nothing but uh, underfit we are underestimating that uh, model and we are simply uh, giving a simple model so that it uh, measurably fails at later point of time and what do you mean by this thing friends can someone help me each model receives equal weight but whereas models are weighted according to their performance this is a pure corporate uh, thing okay whereas this is a typical government environment okay whether uh, just <laughs> i'm not <laughs> commenting anything against but only the thing is uh, so uh, there is no matter suppose if if i am talking about uh, uh, some universities guys just uh, uh, no matter whether s n h or uh, engineering or uh, uh, mba all professors are having equal grade seventh pay means uh, all will be getting uh, starting from the mathematics professor up to the computer science and engineering professor all will be getting same kind of the increment okay so that's how you can refer the each model receives equal weight there is no discrimination but whereas you know in case of our uh, private universities and uh, in case of our uh, companies based on the performance if uma is doing well and if uma is uh, adding value to the team and if he is having skill then only he will be uh, given preference and high core whatever so here also the boosting simply banks on the weighted and according to the performance only the weights are going to add to the model that's it now you see here friends what is the difference here each model is built independently that means uh, uh, suppose if i am talking about the decision tree 1 2 and 3 really is there any relationship between these things friends because uh, in the random forest you know so just we are giving the number of uh, learners or number of decision trees suppose 10 if i am giving all 10 are differently generated with the bootstrapping kind of thing so but whereas new models are influenced by the performance of previously built models agreed friends because if i am uh, adding some characteristic definitely on top of this existing model only we are going to get the boosting okay so they are definitely influenced by the earlier thing suppose you are having the inclination of learning and you are a hard worker then only i can suggest you hey venkat you can go to this blog and you can download this data set and put your effort like that and if that guy is not at all turning up and he is not ready to hard work and but he want to join within 10 days or 15 days into the mnc which is uh, not possible na? so with the training only we cannot give that thing 
okay but uh, at a later point of time with the observation of these particular uh, weights and all then only way we can uh, conclude whether this model is finally uh, improved or not and now if you refer different uh, training data sets are randomly drawn with replacement from the entire training data set what do you mean by with replacement friends somewhere we have seen if you remember with replacement in the sense uh, suppose uh, i am having some data set and uh, uh, the training data and as well as the test data i am generating hope you got the difference between these two actually <laughs> again don't ask me what is training data and test data again we have to start if that <laughs> that comes up <laughs> 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 okay so uh, many at times we get you know at least 10 times we have referred this thing okay so training data friends actually up after getting a data set generally there is a ratio 75 to 80 percentage training data and 25 to 20 percentage as uh, test data test and as well as the train data now if you observe friends with replacement in the sense uh, Without replacement means uh, the same data can be given to training and as well as the testing with replacement. Okay. So, but whereas with replacement specifies that whatever the data I'm getting in the training, I should not get in the testing. Then only I can uh, explore all the classifications. Na? Suppose Venkati, Venkata I ask to uh, submit a gradient descent, ADA boost, XE boost, and as well as a linear regression. He is only taking. Uh, 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 this uh, gradient descent and as well as the uh, classification techniques uh, and he has uh, ignored that XZ boost and ADA boost because he is not uh, explored that. Na? So that is what he is simply ignoring and he is going with whatever he is uh, knowing. But in case of this thing friends, uh, what exactly, okay, whatever the points I have asked, maybe XZ boost or ADA boost, he should place in the testing actually. At later point of time, he can go and prepare those kind of the aspects. Suppose if you are going to some interview, maybe TCS or actions or whatever. So suppose the questions were not uh, uh, answered by you uh, out of 10 questions uh, and you have answered uh, six questions and remaining four questions. Immediately the, the best practice friends here, these four questions, we have to surf in the internet or you can contact with your mentor or wh whichever. So just to, you need to get the solution for that friends. Over the period of the time, okay, if you are attending for the uh, fifth or sixth interview, this is your question paper actually <laughs> whatever the because industry you know they, they may not get uh, all different questions uh, suddenly there is a trend kind of thing why you are learning data science because the market is good and uh, if you could crack that particular things then uh, you can join in a good company and uh, for the bright future that means it's a trend na? so if you are typing which is the best skill uh, which is going to rule uh, uh, up to 10 years then definitely one of those particular tools okay is uh, definitely your uh, uh, data science and uh, big data skills and data engineering all these kind of the aspects okay so th that is how you can observe after attending those kind of the interviews don't uh, forget to uh, get the solutions for the unanswered questions okay and uh, here every new subset contains the element that were misclassified by the previous models what do you mean by this guys every new subset contains the elements that were misclassified by the previous model that means uh, whatever the uh, things we have ignored somewhere we have seen friends if you correctly focus you can easily connect the dots maybe lakshmi venkat neelima akash can give you a try just you think through the elements which are not there in the previous set can be pushed to the next set i have given a hint also Suppose different sets are there and each and every set is containing uh, all the similar kind of the data. And uh, if I am crossing that particular set, uh, if I am comparing between these two sets, definitely there is a distinction between those two sets, dissimilarities. Cluster, na? actually, what do you mean by a cluster? Cluster, oh. is, uh, cluster is nothing but a grouping Correct. of the data. And that particular cluster is containing the similar kind of the items. 
and uh, best example we have seen uh, one case study we have seen uh, what is that case study friends cluster so case we, study uh, like salary and uh, ah, salary and as well as the spending score and if that uh, guy is having low salary and spending high that is one class one cluster and uh, high salary low spending high salary high spending like that we are having so every new subset contains the element that were misclassified by the previous model okay just time analogy i am getting that point also so as to clearly explain these kind of the aspects and now bagging tries to solve the overfitting problem how friends how it is uh, solving the overfitting problem what is the reason behind this just to there is a connect uh, between 5 and 6 uh, fifth and sixth point actually you can answer this maybe like this uh, what is the benefit of the bagging even i am i am thinking about the five ah and understand properly i was just thinking about k cross cross uh, fold um, yeah, k yeah. fold cross validation because Exploring if the all training the... training uh, data is uh, not containing uh, the the uh, if the test data is uh, not uh, containing or, or the the training data should contain all the aspects that uh, the, uh, has to be covered mm. all the all the elements have to be covered otherwise it fails uh, miserably when we give the test data so uh, what we have to do is uh, every, everything has to be covered in the in the training data so mm. that, that's so i'm yeah yeah interpolation perfect but only the thing is you know uh, as bagging is uh, really taking the all the classifier that means uh, all the possible classes uh, uh, both in training and as well as the testing there is no dropping of the predictions friends weak weak uh, we, we ah, nothing nothing week. because uh, in training whatever the uh, points we are exposing to Uh, that particular model that's more or less the same kind of the points we are giving in the test also but why we are segregating those things is uh, at later point of time if i want to uh, compare between prediction and as well as the testing then that is a different story like uh, how accurate accurate our model is whether uh, uh, our model is really performing well and uh, that is a different thing now finally this particular bagging avoids this overfitting simply it is not by hurting but it is trying to explore all possibilities that's what with replacement means it is not going to explore a single zoner it is going to perform all kind of the activities and what do you mean by this biasing friends learning only one model or uh, yeah it's uh, it's a property of uh, the algorithm where algorithm it, uh, yeah yeah that that is how you can refer now uh, of course uh, if you as an example i can say uh, if you are referencing the uh, uh, bagging so the random forest is a best example whereas uh, if i am talking about the boosting that adobe boost can be uh, specified as a boosting technique now one one of the important point friends in bagging Uh, suppose uh, if uh, uh, suppose i am taking four decision trees uh, and all these particular decision trees are unstable okay so uh, let me put this question in this way um suppose i am having a scenario like uh, where i am uh, having the stable kind of the things my model is perfect and all the input is well planned and uh, that is a one scenario friends whereas in the second scenario uh, if the model is having unstable it is not uh, 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 proper and i am having uh, high variance so two important aspects one is model is stable and you were uh, okay so here if i am talking about the uh, stable things and uh, unstable things important friends for the stable kind of the aspects okay for the stable kind of the aspects whether bagging or boosting is better bagging think through mm -hmm. this is high bias for unstable means this is high Various. variance high variance now think through variance is high <laughs> in the differences also we have seen variance is high but i want to perform some kind of the thing obviously this is 
then uh, this this is i variance means we have to use this um, bagging because only average we are taking na average performance whereas uh, the thing is stable and we want to perform the bias high bias is there then in that case boosting is better yeah so just observe here friends uh, there also we have seen high bias low variance and uh, missing value filter correlation filter high variance filter these are all most frequently asked uh, questions friend in, in in the interviews okay so just you uh, think through because uh, though uh, you need not go for uh, chepshev's theorem or else uh, uh, in depth coverage of all those percentages they, they may not ask you in that mode but definitely uh, suppose if i if i am having some uh, uh, data and there if i want to uh, verify whether that data is in the normal form or not and uh, you know friends in the feature scaling also we are having standardization and normalization okay that connect is there na if any technical connect is there better you focus on those particular aspects if as it is that particular stat is not having suppose probability is there probability you need not to study any anywhere but whereas conditional probability you need to study where we have to apply that conditional probability in the Naive bias, obviously, and even uh, probability. If I am saying logistic Just regression, mean, your sigmoid, uh, your sigmoid function, all these kind of the aspects. So that is what, friend. While preparing any algorithm, that's what I. Uh, if you see uh, the assessment, also intentionally I have given just to pick up some three or four algorithms, and you talk about uh, uh, the math or stat behind. Uh, hope you have received that uh, uh, paper, friends. they they have yeah, posted have yeah them. yeah yeah just you think through maybe uh, from tomorrow you can count uh, 15 days maybe january 5th or somewhere uh, you can submit uh, those kind of thing definitely i am going to evaluate and uh, grade you so uh, along with your certificate uh, you will be you will be getting this uh, additional uh, grade also so that it gives you some uh, where you are uh, standing and uh, whether your preparation is enough or not those kind of the things okay and now one more thing friends here i i want to share with you if someone can give the answer let me see data science best practices in the industry so because after 10 years also this is a open question for everyone okay so how do you refer uh, the best practices of data science let me pick some examples best practices because ibm white paper is there aws releases many things but i want to pick up a uh, few kind of the things which are very relevantly because communicate effectively and as well as understanding the business problem these are all common things friends we need not uh, um uh, worry about that okay you need not worry about that but whereas uh, uh, let me do this thing um iterate and adoption these are all the common things we cannot bank on that whereas uh, i have seen some yeah best practices let me uh, paste those things in the session so that you can uh, have a discussion uh, majority of these things are you know Uh, all we have seen uh, okay so algorithm comparisons friends what do you mean by that how can we compare the algorithms friends if i am uh, asking you guys in what way we are going to compare the algorithms basically the regression or uh, class class whatever whatever okay no, no. algorithm comparison this is uh, definitely one of the best practice but my question here is how we are going to compare algorithms on what basis friends can someone help me think through that this is the first thing let me pull uh, some other uh, things because um, they are all day to day changing so again best practices 
I, again, uh, along with these kind of the conventions, I'll be posting some of the articles to you guys. Uh, if time permits, uh, definitely uh, you go and uh, have the study of those kind of the aspects. Okay. But one more important thing is uh, uh, there is no hard or cold rule uh, uh, to give the uh, best practices of the data science friends. In Hadoop, I can give. May I produce best practices or uh, high best practices or big Latin best practices. But only the thing is, friend, this data science is such a vast field because we're having everything with us, na? like data engineering or uh, data science kind of the things. And uh, sometimes we are using feature scaling and all. And if you remember, friends, uh, we have seen one more aspect of the best practice between training test data and as well as the feature scaling. Can someone talk something about that? Yeah, the, the splitting, uh, standardization, uh, after after split, we do apply the normalization or standardization, so uh, we get a better result. Okay, uh, uh, so that means if I'm referencing the another thing, friends, uh, let, let us explore. The second aspect is uh, with respect to the feature scaling. And if I'm asking you this thing, exploratory data analysis. Okay, and then uh, next important thing is, uh, visualizations next important thing is uh, bias variance trade-off now if you uh, think through these kind of things friends uh, first point is algorithm comparison so suppose if i am comparing the efficiency of the two persons Maybe his skill, his knowledge, his experience, his qualification, like that, I can say. But if I want to compare between two algorithms, maybe SVM, naive bias, and uh, random forest or decision tree, how can I do that, friends? Uh, first, by seeing the data, uh, like, uh, um, um, like, uh, uh, we we use uh, basically uh, like KNN. We we take when we have to measure uh, the the distance, and uh, like uh, SVM SVM we increase the, the kernel and it's it's a maximize a maxim maximizing the distance. Okay. Your naive bias is on conditional probability when we have condition and we consider all all the. Learners. learners yeah yeah learners. right and uh, you know friends here one point um if you remember uh, one common uh, property we have uh, seen random state if you remember where we have seen this random state friends uh, periodically uh, when uh, we are uh, selecting the algorithm we give the uh, random uh, state okay na? Random. and one more important thing uh, there only uh, you, you can free to use friends like this, uh, the same kind of the purchase data is there. Na? And if you properly remember for the support vector machine, for the naive bias and for the dish entry and the, for the random forest, for all these algorithms intentionally, we have used this purchase data. And of course, we got uh, dish entry random forest as 91 percentage. If I am not wrong, these are all around uh, 89 and 90 percentage of the data we got that means here itself we can easily say that for this particular data set my decision tree and as well as the random forest have uh, really performed well so automatically i can say uh, comparatively this decision tree random forest were uh, good uh, to select that is how you can compare comparison in the sense uh, we are not going to compare and contrast between the qualities or uh, characteristics of the algorithm and to be frank friends can i say svm is better than naive bias no it depends on the data um, depends on the data only because see i cannot say that because if i am saying venkat he is uh, having background of manufacturing or uh, some some kind of the domain if i am asking me i am a background of research and as well as the industry kind of thing data science and data engineering aspect so in the zoner is different we cannot compare so similarly these algorithms you know which are providing us a plenty of characteristics and there is a that is backed by these stats and as well as the mathematical models and it is wise 
it is always uh, wise to elect the better algorithm without any uh, skew or bias because uh, i cannot uh, because i my favorite algorithm is decision tree or random forest i should not uh, uh, suggest uh, uh, those kind of things for every uh, data set it, it 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 won't work out also because typically if my data is having the non linear kind of the conventions in that particular case definitely we have to go back and uh, apply the svm kind of thing because it is having the kernel trick internally and suppose if your uh, data set is demanding considering all the weak learners and there is a uh, independent behavior then uh, naive bias is a perfect suitable uh, uh, example whereas one more thing friends if you remember while dealing with that uh, polynomial regression which is a typical uh, uh, example for the non linear model okay so how can you compare between uh, A linear and polynomial friends can you, can you give me a quick yeah, reference that, uh, s curve sigmoid ah uh... uh, that one because you know there we have seen clearly your linear model is giving some kind of the straight line whereas your polynomial is nicely giving a curvic nature so just with the all the data points if you observe that means uh, there we have taken one case study friends actually like uh, salary predictions so uh, with salary predictions with the linear model we may, we got some big number these many dollars which is far high whereas with this uh, uh, polynomial regression we are uh, uh, we got some suitable or nearby salary uh, related to recruitment of a particular person so see here the polynomial regression how it how it is having the capacity of doing so friends what is the change in that a simple change we have seen na the, the the squares like ah uh... uh, perfect venkat you are on track actually so that means y equal to beta not plus beta 1 x1 beta 2 x2 and so on beta n xn whereas if i am talking about the polynomial okay now can you help me friends ah uh, this one this is okay x2 square uh, not x2 friend that, that is x1, where x1 we, square uh, yeah same same x1. feature na and uh, b3 x1 square like that okay that means only one uh, particular uh, thing we are taking and we are adopting that particular thing if you go back and verify your uh, one note and if you go back and verify your uh, jupiter notebook example so there we have uh, uh we found out that uh, okay so just we are having some salaries depending on the levels and just to think through friend because uh, you know rather than learning individually i give you a some simple suggestion so just you uh, while preparing the algorithm just to open this uh, this file and go through the data set and what is the outcome we are expecting uh, definitely friends for uh, Uh, starting from the linear regression and for the multiple regression uh, we would have used a common scenario correct okay so and uh, one more important thing is you can easily get the result uh, i mean uh, uh, the rmse or rai or r r2 score for both these uh, linear and multiple then you can fairly observe that how different the multiple Uh, regression with a uh, single linear regression or single or simple regression now as we are taking the common scenario what is the benefit friends rather than taking different scenarios what is the benefit of doing so no no we can see how the how we are getting the result exactly. and exactly we, we can we can easily observe that without changing any environment without changing any data set on the same data set on the same environment on the same scenario if i am working uh, if i am applying multiple algorithm then only i can see na i can say yes on this particular environment multiple regression has done really well when compared with the linear regression and this much error it got reduced and this much accuracy i got like that 
okay so even a small he... change in parameter uh, like uh, i was trying to do uh, the um, um, linear regression and uh, of course uh, the, the parameters that you gave in the class i could not i could not uh, my my system was not permitting uh, the jupiter uh, uh, um, jupiter then uh, what i have done is i have uh, i took it from the uh, multi whatever we have uh, selected the selected some of those parameters then mm. it it was giving uh, we had just three things you know tv newspaper and uh, ah, three things. radio yeah, yeah, you're right. uh, uh, it was showing negative for the newspaper but my thing it got like positive uh, it, it was in the k k fold cross validation somewhere uh, i could not do that, that which uh-huh. we have done that mm-hmm. I, I i had to do taking some other thing then it came like standard uh, scalar or something ah, i yeah, yeah. think that because uh, yeah you are right venkat there also then also one thing one point actually uh, yeah you are talking about this thing actually see uh, one is uh, uh, model selection this is the latest version uh, maybe i'm having some uh, k fold uh, cross validation because uh, see one of the important point friends these are all open sources na no? this is scalar and all what they have done is they rather than uh, keeping this k fold cross validation because you know what it does is it is only uh, talking about the train test uh, set kind of thing and it is going to uh, randomly pick up uh, without any repetition kind of aspects but what they thought of is uh, you know the developer generally they want to branch all the things into a common umbrella rather than again selecting the k fold cross validation they can uh, uh, they what they have done is they have embedded this particular thing also in model selection that's what your latest version because however we are using our anaconda and as well as jupiter notebook uh, latest versions these particular latest versions are having the advancement and though after one week or 10 days uh, maybe some of the uh, functions we have used may not work maybe they dep- they would have deprecated that and they would have placed some kind of uh, another uh, alternative for that but definitely whatever the alternative they provide it is for the sake of us only friends not to complex but to simplify the things okay that is a, a valid point and of course definitely those kind of the conventions you can easily see so that is how you can refer the algorithm comparison ah second thing friends uh, suppose if i am talking about the data pre processing uh, other than this feature scaling i am having which are all the other aspects friends as a part of data pre processing we have seen missing value implementation encoding encoding techniques enough these three you remember automatically you can uh, uh, survive so feature scaling what is the reason behind uh, applicability of this feature scaling when we can use this one any of uh... feature scaling so when we have more more features we no 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 not more features just you are think through suppose i am having age and as well as the salary uh, so salary no, no, we, we, uh, correct correct we use normalization or standardization if uh, if we have uh, outliers then we uh, do not go for uh, normalization yeah then. yeah only the thing is suppose one of the data item is uh, having two digit numbers another data is having five digit number and uh, our algorithm misinterprets that maybe higher values are having high priority lower values are having the low priority so it uh, it always uh, think through that and it is going to perform the activities in the context of those values but that should not be na maybe uh, based yeah. on these things so for that purpose what we we can do is both uh, uh, salary and as well as the experience uh, and age we can uh, uh, jip into a common scale so that even if you are applying some kind of the algorithm uh, it won't uh, give any Uh, skew or prioritized uh, kind of the applicability so that is the most important considerations we have to say now when can we apply standardization and when can we elect this normalization one of the important question friends generally no, when uh, normalization when uh, the data is uh, follows in a normal the normal forms normal okay in the normal form. and also form. we do not have uh, outliers like we discussed the case of uh, igp like uh, 13 more than 10 uh, correct, 13 correct. When, uh, when we see that kind of thing well, we say better we go for the standardization 
visualization as a yeah. best practice because that is a common thing na because i need not verify whether my data is in the because sometimes you know in the requirement specification if they clearly mentions you like this data is uh, in the normal form we are always uh, following the normal form maybe you are designing one uh, project for uh, uh, these guys um, reliance okay reliance uh, industries or reliance trends their uh, their uh, t-shirt sizes and all definitely i should go with uh, the normal form only normal data only they they may not stitch uh, these particular kind of thing for everybody for every kind of thing rather what they do is just they can uh, map the appropriate uh, excel double excel and all these kind of things and obviously they are uh, uh, generating these kind of outputs or outcomes or in the garments and all so for those kind of things definitely they mention and you have to use that uh, convention of the normalization but whereas if you are not aware of your data is whether your data is um, uh, properly normalized or whether your data is containing some uh, different uh, uh, spikes and all uh, you better you go with the standardization and missing values friends if i am asking you what is the best practice in the missing value then how do you refer that we replace with the mean uh, that is the default one in another uh, aspect also we have seen what is that if uh, greater than 30 percentage of the data is missing we in can that, uh, yeah, yeah we have we, we have we can uh, eliminate those. that we can omit or we can eliminate those things okay so that is how you can refer and uh, when can we use the encoding friends this is most important uh, uh, interview question again we have to like label encoding and uh, hmm. uh, one hot encoding um, label encoding one, one not encoding label encoding only we have, we do it uh, on the the labels the the why 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 and sometimes you know some if i am having the categorical data or else sr no 10 and those kind of things okay then i can go with like the label we, we have uh, the countries then we go uh, for this uh, one not encoding yeah yeah like, see that, that is what friend the better way of learning is learning through example because whatever the data set we have taken it is always better rather than going and studying again just to see the data set and what way we have applied that and uh, there uh, we, would, we would have mentioned that particular point also in the uh, python notebook okay then uh, obviously you can uh, uh, within the stipulated time you can prepare and practice okay now can you can someone suggest what exactly this exploratory data analysis friends apart from the visualization of course visualization some people refer under the eda only but okay uh, to explore more just i am uh, referring as a separate branch now how do you uh, refer this exploratory data analysis we have three things that is uh, the central tendency where we calculate mean uh, ah. median mode and then but uh, basically uh, venkat why we are using this exploratory data analysis why expression to understand the data okay to understand mm -hmm. the data and now you you are correct so basically the uh, mean median mode okay how the data is spread mm -hmm. and then we are having the skewness and kurtosis and uh, there we have studied about the range the percentile percentile, percentile thing, that percentile is very important like. friends okay and uh, connected to the percentile we are also having interquartile range all these kind right. of the conventions also we are that helps so, in determining uh, that removes those outliers you yes, know exactly you are right outliers also we can uh, imp uh, handle and uh, i will post uh, some of the uh, case studies friends uh, uh, worked out examples where we are taking some uh, ages of the people and uh, if i want to apply and outliers z score we have seen na z score i can apply iqr i can apply okay from the given data after applicability of this particular z score and as well as my interquartile range i can able to uh, figure out uh, which are all the outliers and all and uh, uh, with the visualization also we can see friends some of the outliers box plot scatter plot because there you can see uh, which are behaving uh, differently and there you can observe uh, the concept of this particular uh, things okay That's so with the, this is what i wanted to ask see visually when you talked about the first point on the algorithms oh. uh, when we initially when we load the data uh, mm. before because we when we do the visualization when we uh, see the visualization uh, the, the plot then uh, that also gives an idea of what uh, we can choose 
uh, what type of uh, what what parameters we can choose which 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 are the uh, variables that we need to take uh, take ah, like yeah, uh, yeah. like the one that we discussed earlier on the exactly. salary age and uh, correct, uh, correct. the gender hmm. that one and also the model uh, what kind How of model that we need to Yeah, yeah. Now one more point. Uh, rightly, you remember you uh, uh, right, good to say that thing, friends. Uh, you highlighted uh, that point. Now there is a point here, friends. I am having the data. I want to get the complete profile of the data. What do you mean by this, friends? What do you mean by complete profile of the data? Let me share some interesting uh, thing here, friends. Uh, complete profile just i have uh, created something for you uh, one minute friend just give me some time so that i can uh, pull that particular example for you guys uh, so yeah data science yes there is a uh, car data friends we are having the car uh, some uh, used cars so that particular used cars data i am having and uh, let it be loading yeah yeah not purchase data yeah yeah this one only okay one minute guys so that you can uh, enjoy this uh, uh, session with uh, this is normal uh, loading of various data and all and thereafter ah just you observe here friend what i have done is uh, i am having some cars data with me so that particular car uh, engine number year and which city it belongs and how many kilometers it has traded all these kind of things we are having now one more important uh, uh, one more important uh, consideration i am giving here because though i am having my describe and as well as the info what what is the difference between describe and info friends describe and info De describe calculates everything info info just the the, the number info of gives uh, the number of columns and how many lines and any missing values ah, or how many very lines good. excellent whereas in uh, describe gives it gives the calculation of mean median entire, the edi mean, it median, gives the entire and, uh, percentile all these things Correct. perfect now uh, out of curiosity just if you refer this point friends uh, here uh, what it is saying is but profiling is not a default uh, Uh, in your anaconda uh, just i am i am sharing this particular document also with you this coding part also uh, just uh, along with the uh, train and as well as the test data what i am doing here is uh, just i am installing this particular uh, uh, pandas profiling uh, in the anaconda navigator so just you can uh, uh, type anaconda command prompt here so just you can select that and uh, uh, in that particular uh, prompt only you can give this uh, Uh, pip install uh, pandas profiling okay because this is a latest library uh, uh, though we are uh, having the advantage of that particular uh, uh, i can say this uh, describe and as well as the info but apart from that okay just how simple it is you see friends uh, along with generally what we are doing is import pandas as pd we do that that is a general convention apart from that we are having the pandas profiling and we are taking this as a pf what i am doing is my data frame just i am reading this particular data uh, whatever the cars data i have mentioned uh, it is in the excel format that's what we are mentioning that read underscore excel if it is there in the csv i would have used that read underscore csv that is one point finally we are going to store this data into the df4 so let me uh, okay run this maybe i should run everything you no problem and uh, let me show you what exactly this uh, data frame is containing uh see friends so only i want to get only five records because many records were there here i am having the country age salary and as well as whether that guy has purchased or not these kind of details i am having now i want to get the complete profile report of this uh, data frame okay so what i am doing here is uh, a simple command i want to generate this uh, profile report from this uh, profiling so pandas underscore profiling and there i am using this uh, thing and i am sending this uh, data from four as a parameter 
observe here my data frame for containing the information of this uh, cars data now i am uh, make i want to make use of the profile report if you observe after giving this thing we are not going to get anything just it is uh, running through and it is uh, performing some kind of the summarizations and generate report structure and uh, render html but finally what we have done is we are going to generate we are going to get this particular information in the format of the profile report let me open that so i'm having some folder with me uh, within that i am having the profile report let me open that friends for you yeah hope you are seeing the screen profile report okay so this profile report you know sir friends just you observe just with the uh, simple loading of that profiling okay pandas profiling and we have uh, we are going to get these models friend let let us uh, go through first overview of the data second we are going to talk about the variables each and every variable see nice report how it has given you need not go for uh, visualizations also and interactions how the data is uh, spread over year and as well as the price and correlations generally we need to explicitly mention the uh, heat map kind of thing and missing values you know how it is showing all these things almost are there but only new price is not there and the sample data okay some last rows see friends how beautiful the pandas way of uh, uh, doing the things so simply no, the data is uh, complicated i think this this helps a lot in uh, definitely write, definitely uh, you need not uh, write any complex coding that's what friends i am saying but you have to explore that's all maybe you need not go and uh, heavy coding and all not at all required only the thing is uh, just you can uh, go and verify see here what it is saying missing cells 6.8 statistics number of variables 13 number of observations 6019 missing cells missing cells okay that means in 5311 places we got uh, some missing values like that we are having and uh, variables you know okay just uh, categorical data which is high cardinal data okay these many cars who i am having okay and thereafter location which is category the type of data also it is giving friends and year which is a number of course and uh, kilometers uh, driven okay how many kilometers it has uh, traveled so this is high correlation and skewed <laughs> that means definitely the year and as well as the number of kilometers there are uh, having some high correlation uh, if two variables are highly correlated then what is the implication friends what is the implication we have to get we can uh, we can drop uh, one one, one. <laughs> we can drop one variable in a way that is also your dimensional reduction technique that is what right. maybe not directly friends always transmission again it is a high correlation because uh, see uh, in in the general aspect uh, how do we get uh, high correlation whether that uh, thing is uh, highly correlated or not with the visualization i can get uh, just with the pair plot second thing is explicitly i have to calculate the correlation but with this particular profiling friends with this particular profiling one can uh, uh, by default as a by product you can get uh, the kind of the data whether it is categorical or yeah in or... one instance just by load, loading the data and applying this uh, we get we get uh, within within a few seconds i think few seconds yeah yeah definitely this. that is that is what so that is what the advantage and here interactions and uh, here uh, year and price and now if i am selecting this kilometers and all see immediately it is getting changed and now see it's it is changing like that see friends how interactive it is it is like one kind of the tool where i can bank on where i can make use of for interactive profiling also okay so and now correlation and if you observe their peers and correlation some kind of the correlation are there in statistics those kind of aspects you can see and uh, in the count if i want to in the matrix format or heat map okay see how nice it is and in the dendrogram somewhere we have seen a dendrogram where is this dendrogram friends if you uh, we have seen last uh, when we are seeing the clustering uh, uh, cluster and uh, scientific data for yes. the scientific yeah data yeah data. scipy in scipy also we have seen and these are all the sample records maybe i need not go and verify 
which are all the top records and which are all the bottom records okay so with this uh, i want to conclude the session guys and but uh, before leaving uh, definitely uh, this uh, key takeaways can someone help me which are all the key takeaways of the session talked about uh... initially we started uh, uh, boosting and concept of the bagging okay bagging uh, uh, the kind of things okay where we are getting the average performance overall whereas boosting uh, is a kind of heterogeneous kind of aspects where we are keep on adding uh, some kind of the characteristics example random forest these are all some kind of the boosting algorithms we are having okay there we have seen some kind of the distinctions and all coming to the next uh, third aspect we have seen some kind of the best practices but i want to uh, just i i am suggesting you guys just you can go and uh, explore more because best practices are not uh, common to all companies uh, maybe if you are attending interview for tcs or ibm or action sur okay better you uh, uh, think through and uh, you can see the best practices followed by these companies uh, maybe paypal or amazon or all these these kind of the companies are there na? because there is no common best practice as far as the you consider but some of the things we have seen which are common to these kind of the companies like algorithm comparison uh, exploratory data analysis and missing value filters encoding techniques all these uh, feature scalings and all and the next one is uh, just recently we have seen what is what do you mean by that friends profiling and uh, with this particular profiling you can uh, uh get everything friends so, so the everything in a sense uh, maybe i can see the correlation analysis and as well as the type of the data okay and then uh, the uh, summary of the data okay so all these kind of the conventions with a single uh, uh, report uh, we can able to perform okay so that is how you can uh, refer uh the uses of uh, uh, these uh, correlation uh, and categorical or summary with the help of these profiling aspects okay so that's all guys for uh, today's session and uh, from now onwards uh, my work is less and your uh, uh, work is more okay because uh, at any moment you struck or if you want me to help okay technically or any any kind of conceptually definitely write to me just you post your queries in uh, classroom google classroom they have shared it now so so that definitely i can reply back and all uh, are we having session tomorrow or tomorrow or let me see because i am not sure we have done with the 50 oh. sessions maybe uh, tomorrow uh, uh, kumar hmm. and uh, uh, these guys are planning for uh, valedictory kind of thing so let me see and uh, if i am getting the chance of interacting with you guys one hour or one and a half hour definitely i'll come <laughs> it's, up with it's, uh, uh, we do not want class but kind of if we have anything might be we can end up uh, end up uh, very quickly if we have anything uh... then i do one thing so just let me log in by as usual timing okay tomorrow not for the session maybe uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, interaction or kind some... of uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all people ready with your videos also okay <laughs> oh, okay so, that's good that, that's see good i am also thing. i am also in travel like like for uh, last 10 days i'm in india and i'm i'm in a mood to pack a bag <laughs> so if tomorrow i can i'll be at hyderabad so we can have uh, uh, definitely of... definitely we can get okay so all the best guys and uh, tomorrow just we'll have a discussion and if you want me to ask any questions or any suggestions specifically so feel free to ask tomorrow so that i can uh, uh answer you and if i am knowing if i am not knowing however uh, 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 some other point of time definitely i will be sharing my uh, mail id and uh, so that you can contact me uh, at any point yeah, of yeah, time okay. Okay. even i'll be looking i could not look at the the assessment whatever uh, sheet i'll i'll just look and uh, i'll like i'll be like coming uh, coming back like if if i have any any doubts on how <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah definitely venkat definitely because uh, you know uh, that's that's not a typical uh, googling kind of thing and getting back and pasting because you have to do lot more work that's what i we thought of as a team uh, uh, rani me and kumar thought of okay we'll give some uh, two weeks time uma so that they can come up and uh, submit their project work like that 
so uh, that's what i i also felt uh, the same thing maybe after uh, completion of this session you can take a pause and uh, jump into that particular thing and yeah, you can yeah. come back and wait otherwise we lose the um, the main Tempo. gist of yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the the that uh, training you know just saying exactly. that i have done data science and at least <laughs> at the end of the day if i look at that at least i can go back and yeah, yeah, retouch exactly. some of those points exactly exactly Thank so you. yeah yeah sure so tomorrow have a we'll we'll have a nice uh, interaction and all okay sure. so that's all guys uh, thank you okay thank you very much thank you yeah see you back